what is up youtube welcome back to my channel if this is your first time here then just welcome to my channel welcome okay go ahead and hit the subscribe button because you will not be disappointed unless you don't like good content and if that is the case then my girl you got options as you can tell by the title today's video is going to be another true crime and makeup video where i sit here on my throne and i tell you a true crime story while i do my makeup it's a good time if you like true crime okay so if you are interested in hearing the story of the Pappen sisters hearing my thoughts on the case and seeing how i achieve this look then just keep on watching today's video guys and gals is about the Pappen sisters you may or may not have heard of them i hope you have it see this is the thing i always go for the stories that i just hope you guys have never heard of with the exception of course of the halloween week i just i assume that that's what you all want to hear like i assume that you prefer the stories you have not heard of but maybe not i don't know you guys let me know because i have people that request that i do like jeffrey dahmer and uh, ted bundy people like that that everybody and their mom has heard of so i don't know do y'all prefer that i tell stories that you haven't heard before or like the less popular stories or do you do you just not care i don't know just let me know Clements and Gustave in 1900s are a couple living in France and you know once upon a time they were really happy. That is until Clements started to cheat on Gustave. She got herself a little job and her employer was looking mighty fine. She started sleeping with her boss and um, yeah that caused problems in their relationship because word got back to old Gustave and um, she became pregnant and Gustave didn't leave her. He was like you know what? he was in love and he wanted to work it out so he decided that he was going to stay with her marry her and raise this child as his own now y'all let me i didn't even put on no primer what am i doing so fast forward to months later clemens gives birth to a baby girl that they name well she names amelia and gustave is thinking okay you know she messed up or whatever i've forgiven her she's married me we gonna go on and raise this kid and be happy at least you know that's what he was thinking but unfortunately for him homegirl clements had not cut off her affair with her side dude she was still seeing him on the low and gustave sought out a job in another town because he's like you know i'm just gonna move her away so she can stop cheating on me as if she probably wouldn't have found her another man in another city but anyway when he does find another job he is ecstatic because he's thinking this is what they need but homegirl pretty much hit him with she would rather die. She would commit suicide before she left the town with her lover. Technically without her lover. You know what I mean. When he realized it was that serious, he still decided to stay with her. Like they stayed in the town they were in. But he became increasingly depressed. He started drinking a whole lot. And he was just sad because his bae, she didn't want to leave. She would rather kill herself. Like, imagine you're in love with somebody and they would rather kill themselves than to break up with somebody else. Now, as you probably already imagined, the marriage deteriorated. It went downhill fast. But the two stayed together. That's another thing I don't get. Like, why stay together when you're unhappy? I'm out, okay? The two remain together and they raised Amelia as both their own. But when she was about nine, they decided to send her off to a Catholic orphanage where it was discovered that Gustav had actually raped her. And um, that's terrible. You know what? That really sucks though because he probably did it out of his anger and frustration because you know the whole situation. But that's not her fault. Like you can't take your anger for her real true biological pants out on her. But he did nevertheless. She never returns home to her parents. She joins the covenant, she becomes a nun, and she just does not look back. So in 1905, the couple also had welcomed their second daughter, Christine. But right off the bat, they decided they did not want her. And as soon as she was born, they gave her away to Gustav's sister and her husband to raise. And she lived happily with them for seven years before she was also tossed to the orphanage like I don't understand that like it seems like everybody in these in these days of this story just having kids keeping them for a little while and then tossing them to the orphanage like is that a thing that I'm unaware of is that like a French thing I don't know I do not understand I don't know what's happening with these young girls when they go to the orphanage how they are converting them into nuns the same thing that happened with 
Amelia happened with Christine. She went to the orphanage and then she decided that she got her calling to be a nun. But this time Clemens wasn't having it. She was like, nope, which I don't understand that either because you weren't even raising this little girl. So why would you be upset and opposed to her becoming a nun? Nevertheless, she was. She got her child and she preferred that she worked instead of become a nun. She got her a nice little job as a housekeeper and that's just what it was neither clemens nor her husband gustav wanted these wanted children but they kept on having them that didn't stop them from making them okay the couple welcomed in 1911 their third daughter leah they gave leah away to clemens's brother this time and she stayed with him until she died which is unclear how old she was when he died she was kind of young like a preteen when he died because after he passed away she was sent to the catholic orphanage the nun factory and she stayed there until she was 15 and able to work the girls personalities were like polar opposites christine was described as a hard worker a more outspoken personality she was a good cook she had much pride in her cooking that's something that she enjoyed she was known to do well and she was pretty much a good girl she was described as being oftentimes insubordinate like she was a little stubborn sometimes but for the most part she was she was cool or whatever leah on the other hand was the opposite she was very very quiet very introverted very obedient she pretty much just was the polar opposite of christine she was also considered to be a lot less intelligent than christine now the sisters worked as maids in various upper class homes you know with the rich peoples they had a good reputation of just being great help like everybody liked them a lot of people wanted them and they preferred to work together whenever possible i mean the Pappin sisters were pretty much i mean they were all around good girls they were quite oh they were quiet they kept to themselves every sunday they would dress up and attend church they were known to be rather unsocial christine and leah preferred the company of themselves and the, each other versus anybody on the outside so they really didn't have any friends other than each other they were very very close very close every day they had a two hour break after lunch and they were free to pretty much go and do whatever see whomever but they decided every day to just spend it alone with each other in their room with the door closed and locked weird in 1926 christina leah found living positions as maids for the lancelin family the husband was a retired lawyer yeah he was a lawyer his name was also Renee. Wow. His wife, Leonie, and their granddaughter, Genevieve, also lived in the house. And by outside accounts, the family treated them well. Leanne and Christine ate the same food as the family. They were paid well. They lived in a heated room. Apparently, you know, that was above average back in the day. Leave me alone, please. Above average back in the day for, you know, the help to partake in the same privileges as the prestigious family they were working for now mind you i said this is by outside accounts because in actuality things were not as good as they seemed for the Pappin sisters they had a rather strange relationship with the family that they worked for for one neither of the sisters had ever spoken directly to renee the husband the entire seven years that they worked at the house instead the sisters were given orders by the wife leonie and she still didn't even she didn't even communicate with them verbally directly. She would write down everything that, you know, she needed to tell them or say to them. She never spoke to them directly. Neither did the daughter, Genevieve. Now, Leonie was very, very difficult to work for. She was a perfectionist. She was a little crazy, if you ask me. She was a perfectionist. She was a neat freak. She was very critical of the girls. She demanded perfection. She would often perform white glove tests on the furniture to make sure that the furniture had been properly dusted. Everything had to be immaculate. She was very critical of Christine's food when she cooked. Mind you, I told you earlier that Christine was an artist, okay? And she was sensitive about her shit. So she took a lot of pride in the dishes that she created. 
so of course she didn't really like this but I mean she didn't really have a choice but to listen and you know make alterations she would force Leah to go back and clean when she missed a spot like she was she was pretty difficult now a couple of years after the girls started to work for the family Leonie developed depression as if she wasn't difficult enough to work with, okay? She developed depression and it made her like act out and she took a lot of her frustrations out on the girls. She increasingly became verbally abusive to them to the point where she was physically abusive to them. Over time, the abuse worsened to the point where she would slam their heads into walls regularly and it's like, girl, let me tell you something. Slam my head into a wall. Try it. Because baby, as soon as your hand land on these edges, we're going to be on the floor. Now, by 1933, the Pappen sisters have been living with the Lancelins, working for them, enduring abuse for six years. Christine was now 27. Leah was 21. I really feel like being extra with today's look. I hope y'all don't feel like we too close. But um, Now, on February 2nd, 1933, Mrs. Lancelin. Lancelin. Her and her daughter Genevieve go out on a shopping spree. They are, you know, having a girl's day out, enjoying Mr. Lancelin's coin. The plan was for the mother and daughter duo to go directly to Renee, her husband's brother's house, for a fancy little dinner that evening where Renee would meet up with them. He would already be there. I feel like I'm just like uncomfortably too close to you guys, but you know, we just gonna roll with it. Sorry if this is too close. So, anyway, like I said the plan was for them to meet at the brother's house for them all to have a fancy little rich people dinner and then go home the sisters were not expecting the family to return home until late that evening they did all of their errands performed all of their chores one of the errands included picking up this iron from the repair shop now the issue with the iron was that when you plugged it into the outlet it was knocking out the like all of the electricity all over the house so they picked up the iron they did all of their due diligence around the house when they picked up said iron according to the sisters they plugged it into the outlet to do some ironing and they blew a fuse in the house knocking out all of the power again like it had before they decided to wait until morning to try to fix the fuse given that the lancelins would not be home until late anyway they figured you know when they come home it's gonna be dark they won't need the light anyway right let's just go to bed worry about this another time i feel like i'm starting to look like the green lantern's wife now unfortunately Things don't go as planned always because Genevieve and her mother return home unexpectedly to a very dark, dark house. They arrive home about 5.30 p.m., right? Now, this was the second time in a week that Christine had blew a fuse while trying to iron with this little faulty iron. And oddly, the repairman had told Leonie that he didn't find anything wrong with the iron. So she was already kind of feeling away, right? She was already feeling away. So Christine comes down and she informs Leonie and Genevieve that this iron had caused another, you know, outage. Leonie becomes irate and starts to attack the sisters. Like she is just going in, she lunges at the sisters, she's, you know, swinging them little arms and swinging them hands. She had been violent with the sisters and she had become accustomed to them not really fighting back, but this time was different. Oh, it was so different. Yes, ma'am. Christine snapped like oxygen, lifetime, whatever channel that comes on. She snapped, okay? She lunges at Genevieve, the daughter, and immediately gouges her eyeballs out. Like, girl, you couldn't just slap the girl. Like, you could pinch her. You couldn't. You got, who does, whose first move is that? I mean, unless, you know, somebody trying to steal your goodies. She literally tears Genevieve's eyes out with her fingers. Leah quickly joins in. She grabs Mrs. Lancelin and throws her to the floor. Christine then orders her sister to gouge out her eyeballs as well. And so, you know, Leah does what she's told. She sticks her fingers into the lady's eyeballs and pulls them literally out like is that easy to do i don't know i ain't never tried to tear nobody eyeballs out like is that a thing that's easy to do christine then runs down to the kitchen grabs a kitchen knife and a hammer she passes one of the weapons off to leah and they proceed to just slice dice bludgeon and just 
attack this mother-daughter duo they had no no chance none now the sisters also grab a pewter picture that is sitting in the hallway a little piece of you know decor and proceed to bludgeon the women they bash both of their faces in like completely they lift up the ladies skirts and begin to cut into their buttocks and thighs don't know how we escalated to this but here we are and i don't make the news i just reported so don't don't pass no judgment on me i'm just telling you what happened. and as if all that ain't bad enough get this they basted the mother and the daughter's menstrual blood like girl how disrespectful do you have to be don't pour nobody's menstrual blood on me don't even pour my menstrual blood on me okay that's not okay <sighs> this entire little incident is said to have lasted 30 minutes like 30 minutes straight now that doesn't sound like a lot of time you know that's a long time to be attacking somebody so after this of course the you know the mother and daughter are deceased the sisters go and they take a shower they get into their bed butt naked together one bed you know they had two beds but they decided to get into one I don't know what that was about, but hey. Oh, before they got into bed, they locked every door in the house and then they lit a little candle in their room. And then that's when they got into bed together, which makes it all the more weird. The candle just really make it worse than what it sounded like before. So when the mother and daughter duo does not turn up at their fancy little dinner, the husband, what's his name? Renee, that girl. Renee grabs a friend and he decides to, you know, head over to the house to check it out. Now, they arrive at the home between 6.30 and 7 o'clock and they cannot get in. Like, it's literally bolted shut. They can't get through any of the doors. They noticed that the house was completely dark except for this light, faint little flicker of light coming from one of the bedrooms. Of course, it was the sister's bedrooms. And so they're like, somebody's here. Like, they're there. Why are they not answering? Now, this made them alert police because they like, you know what? Something ain't right. The police arrive with the locksmith and, you know, they huff and they puff and they tear them doors down. Okay. Now, immediately upon entering the house, the police, they take a look around. Nothing is really going on on the first floor. But as soon as they go up the stairs, they encounter the bodies and they're like... It's, it's a, a grisly scene for sure. Both of the women are laying there. They are unrecognizable. Like, their faces... You can actually, if you Google the Pappin sisters and look at the images, I'm not going to insert them because I feel like that's just a bit too much. They do have pictures of the crime scenes and the bodies and they their faces, y'all, look like in ground beef, okay? It's so terrible. It's so terrible. Their teeth were scattered about the floor. One of Genevieve's eyeballs was literally laying on the top of the stairs, like the top stair. The other was underneath her body. Her mother, Mrs. Lancelin, her eyeballs were tucked away in a scarf. Like, she was wearing this scarf around her neck, and they were tucked away in the scarf. Like, girl, they didn't just fall there. Y'all put them there. Why? Um, Mrs. Lancelin was laying with her body facing up, and um, Genevieve facing downward. Both women's private areas were exposed. Mrs. Lancelin only had one little shoe on. They just, I don't know why I even felt the need to to um to say that i don't know if that's important to you but she only had one shoe the kitchen knife which was just one of the weapons was laying there with the bodies and um there was blood everywhere like blood splatter all on the ceiling all on the walls just everywhere shit all over the mama but that blood came from you know her daughter's hoo-ha that has got to be one of the most disrespectful things that I have, you know, encountered in doing any of these stories or even heard of in a murder. Like, you're going to throw somebody's. I can't get over it. I'm sorry. I am disgusted. I just, I need, I need a drink. Now, naturally, the police, Mr. Renee, his homeboy, they're all thinking, okay, if this happened to, you know, the wife and the daughter, the sisters, like, where are they? They must be hurt as well. They initially thought that, you know, they had met the same fate. They proceed to search the rest of the house, like preparing themselves to meet another grisly scene like this. But when they get up to the third level where the sister's room was, the door was locked. And so they're like, 
the sisters are up there chilling in the room girl butt naked in the bed together they're hearing all of this commotion they did not come out they just in there waiting like just waiting on the inevitable they already know it's about to be some trouble the locksmith proceeds to unlock the bedroom door and of course the sisters are found just laying there together on the little nightstand with the candle with the flickering flame there's the hammer with bits of hair and tissue stuck to it Ugh. and they just chilling like ain't nothing happen now they immediately confessed to the crime they claimed that it was self-defense christine was quoted saying it was either her or us and they basically had no choice but to def defend themselves the sisters were separated and placed in a holding cell because you know that's what happens typically when you commit a crime with someone christine became extremely depressed because she could not see leah and as a result she began to act out in the prison she started you know she really started tripping at what point it was so bad that the prison officials just pretty much decided that they might as like they should probably just go ahead and let the sisters see each other and when they do something very very peculiar happened as soon as she saw leah christine ripped open her blouse threw herself to her knees right before leah and was like please just say yes and um everybody was like girl y'all been having sex like at that point people were like um let's believe that the sisters were having some sort of incestuous relationship I'll make the news I just reported. I'm just here to tell you the story, okay? The defense argued that the sisters were temporarily insane at the time of the murder and therefore not responsible. The court appointed three psychologists to examine the girls and determine their mental capacity. They concluded that the girls had no mental disorder and deemed them mentally sane. Although they did have mental illness in the family, like they have several family members who made it to the asylum or like, like committed suicide, spazzed out and jumped off a bridge, different things like that, you know, small stuff. I feel like my scent powder is a little too bright, so I'm gonna take this yellow one. Girl, I think that's the same color. Well, we're here now, so we're just going to go with it. At the trial, the jurors only took 40 minutes to deliberate. And they were like, you know what? These girls guilty. The court had decided that they were mentally sane and therefore guilty. Christine Pappen was seen as the leader and the mastermind. And so she was sentenced to be put to death by guillotine. You know, when they put your head through the hole and then they drop the little knife, the guillotine and chops it off. You know, the whole heads will roll thing. Yeah, that. Now her younger sister Leah was considered a mere accomplice to murder and so she was given a lighter sentence of 10 years of hard labor. Luckily though for Christine, her death sentence was commuted to just life imprisonment and she didn't get her head chopped off, which is nice. I mean, I guess depending on how you look at things. I really cannot believe that Poppy and Blue are allowing me to film like in peace and quiet. This literally never happens. They're probably shredding my debit cards, plotting on me like the Papin sisters. I literally don't hear them. I don't see them. And I'm starting to get a feeling that when I get through with this, I'm going to be pissed off. Because all along, when I thought they were being good, they were actually up to stuff. Up to no good. Now, the separation just proved to be too much for Christine, okay? She could not take being away from Leah. She became very depressed and her condition, like, rapidly deteriorated once they were apart. She at first tried to claw her own eyeballs out, and so therefore they put her in a straitjacket. She would have these strange psychotic, like, breakdowns and outbursts all the time. And then over time, she refused to eat. Now, prison officials decided to transfer her to a mental institution, hoping that some, you know, professional care would help, but it doesn't. Still separated from Leah, she continues to starve herself until she finally dies on May 18th, 1937, four years into her sentence. Leah only served eight of her 10 years and then she was released in 1941. She moved to a new town. She changed her identity. Her mother actually joined her and she said to have lived out her days with her mother under her new identity. She ultimately experienced a stroke which rendered her partially paralyzed and unable to speak. And so then she was moved to a hospice facility where she just, you know, she lived out the rest of her days there. She passed away in 2001. And because both of the girls are now dead at this point in the story, that's the end of it. 
let's talk because I got I got some I got some you know I got some feelings and um, I feel like see, this is the thing not to say anybody deserved to be well actually some people deserve some people do deserve to have their eyeballs ripped out let's just not take everybody into consideration not to say that this mother and daughter in particular deserve to have their eyeballs gouged out and faces beaten into the back of their heads, okay? Not saying that they deserved it, however, comma, I do feel like they deserve something. I know that at least a smack. You can't do wrong to a person and tell them how mad to get, right? I feel like worst case scenario, they deserve to, you know, get them hands. That did not do what I wanted it to do. Let, let's, let's rewind that back. I feel like Mrs. Lancelin deserved to get that ass beat, not to a bloody pulp, but you know, a little hair pull and a little smack, 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 you know, just something like that. Maybe a black eye, bruised lip, you know, nothing too serious. I really can't say that I felt bad for her in this situation. Like, it was very difficult to feel bad for her. Because had she not been fucking with them girls, she wouldn't have ended up the way she was. And that's just that on that. I want to know what you guys think. Like, I, I don't want to say they deserved it. But, you know, do you get why I feel the way I said that I do? Furthermore, do you feel like this was premeditated? Because I kind of got the vibes around the iron thing. The fact that this was the second time in the same week that the iron blew this fuse. But the repairman found it not to be faulty. Like, do you believe that it was really an accident that the power was being lost in this house? Or do you think? Because I feel like maybe they were plotting, you know, them two hours they spend on their break in their room with the door closed. And granted, they could have been bumping and grinding and scissoring. Okay, I don't know. They could have been. But I feel like they could have been plotting as well. Like, they might have been plotting to, you know take this family out i think that they were that's just my opinion i ain't here forcing it on you i just want to know if we thinking alike i think the iron thing was untrue i feel like they cut the power and the first time that it happened something went wrong or maybe they got cold feet and decided that particular day would not have been the day for it and so christine was probably like little girl we need to go ahead and do this and so leah was like okay and then they went in for their little plan again and they just, they carried it out. I feel like that's what happened. I feel like because of the way she was treating them, they plotted and they, they, they took them out. But anywho, that is it for this video. If you enjoyed the story, if you like the look, don't forget to give it a thumbs up on your way out. Share this video, comment down below. Subscribe to my channel if you have not. As always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Peace.